Richard Vobes is a smoker. He wasn't always. This is actually a habit he has acquired in the last three years. And the reason why he became a smoker is the reason why most people quit smoking. And that's because of medical advice. You see, Richard Vobes heard that mainstream medical researchers consider smoking to be the cause of a wide range of debilitating diseases, such as strokes, bladder cancer, lung cancer, congestive pulmonary disorder, peripheral artery disease, and a whole range of horrible conditions that can dramatically end or reduce the quality of your life. But Richard is such a contrarian that he believes that if all of the mainstream medicine establishment are saying the same thing, then it cannot possibly be true. And that is why he took up smoking. And like all new converts to a religion, he's something of a fundamentalist, which is why the British Prime Minister Keir Starmer's proposal to create a smoke-free generation is particularly irksome to uh, Richard Vobes. But I wanted to make a comment, I suppose, about the, uh, the Keir Starmer idea of banning smoking outside pubs uh, to try and save people. 80,000 people, he says, are, are dying from smoking-related diseases and it's a huge strain on the NHS, something like that. Richard believes that the entire notion that cigarette smoking can lead to a, a wide variety of painful, hideous and crippling medical disorders is nothing but a popular myth, a delusion. And he believes that it's a delusion that his uh, impeccable wit and logic has allowed him to see through. But even Richard would admit that this belief is not actually founded on first-hand experience. Cigarettes, I've never actually smoked cigarettes, so I don't really know what they're like. I know that cigarettes um, have got something in them to make them addictive. Cigarettes don't just contain tobacco, they contain additives that modify the way tobacco burns that might increase the uptake of nicotine when it hits your lungs. It's designed to be addictive. It's designed to release that nicotine more quickly in order to get the kind of hit that increases addictive dependency on the primary active substance, which is nicotine. So knowing that, it, it's a very strange thing that Richard is so keen to defend the rights of uh, the current generation of 14-year-olds to become smokers, because it's a, it's a product that is entirely and cynically marketed for no purpose other than to create a, a kind of addiction. That, that's the idea behind the government's smoke-free generation policy, a policy that Richard evidently believes is cruel unnecessary and a breach of fundamental human rights. They've already got this thing with the cigarettes that if you're 14 or ever, you could never buy a cigarette. You, that choice has now been taken from you. And as you grow older and older, you won't be able to buy us any cigarettes or try it, not legally. And they'll come down at you with like a, a sack of potatoes and, you know, beat you up in the street. Richard Vobes is clearly not a detail-oriented guy, uh, and it won't surprise you that his pulsating mind has muddled up a, a few of the essential details of the government's smoke-free generation policy proposal. The idea is not to criminalise smoking a cigarette, but it is to criminalise the sale of cigarettes to the generation who are currently aged 14. The idea is that the age at which cigarettes can be sold to a person will go up by one year every year. So those people currently aged 14 will never be allowed to legally buy cigarettes in a British shop. That, to Richard Vobes, is a clear and terrible violation of their human rights. He believes that it's the right of any Englishman to buy as many cigarettes as they want, and, and that right is clearly being trampled by a government gone mad. But um, in Richard Vobes' mind, this is some kind of slippery slope that will lead to something far, far worse. The exclusion of cigarette smokers as an entire class of people from polite society, forced to the margins of society where they may eke out a meagre existence as a sort of 
excluded minority, maltreated by the rest of society. That is the tragic future that Richard predicts for his people. Once they've managed to get it outside of the pubs and in the small parks, it'll be all recreation grounds, all anywhere. It'll be the street, it'll be your back garden, it'll be inside your car, it'll be anywhere. This is the tyrannical overreach of a government that has gone mad with power. It is clearly violating the rights of Richard Vobes as an Englishman to do just what the hell he wants in his van. If he wants to drive from Worthing to London as he hurtles through the night on the A24 and simultaneously smoke, change gear and steer his vehicle at the same time, then it should be his God-given right as an Englishman. And no government should take that right away from him. After all, this government clearly isn't doing it for safety. The, the notion that smoking whilst operating a vehicle might be dangerous is, is clearly nonsensical as the notion that smoking 20 a day Benson and Hedges might lead to a series of painful and crippling heart conditions. These are ridiculous notions that Richard has already refuted. He can see through the nonsense. He knows that None of this has anything to do with the government's desire to preserve our lives or simply reduce the, the costs to our National Health Service due to smoking and presumably also smoke driving incidents. This, I don't think the government give one iota about your health. After all, let's face it, they're spraying the skies with um, heavy metals, they're putting fluoride into the water, they're radiating us with their 5G towers, they're pushing us into these 15-minute cities with mean little houses. Another gleaming nugget of logic plopped out of uh, Richard's loosening sphincter of wisdom. The idea that other things exist Therefore, the government's stated goals for the smoke-free generation policy could not possibly be what they claim to be. Specifically, the idea that the 5G phone system exists, the, the, the data carrier system for the next generation of connected devices. Richard has watched too many Mark Steele videos, and he believes that this is not a communication system, but some kind of deadly weapon mounted on phone masts. It's a bizarre belief that is born from a truly unhinged mind. But, but what about that gripe about 15-minute cities? That's an urban planning philosophy intended to locate the essential businesses and services we need, like food shops, post offices, libraries. They should all be within 15 minutes travel of people's home. And not 15 minutes by car, but 15 minutes by foot or, or by bicycle. The idea of this policy is to reduce car dependent urban sprawl because these are ways of living that are known to, to create unhappiness, to, to shorten lives. People have discovered that when you have uh, flexible walkable communities that promotes good health because people start to walk. It, it's strange the things that Richard believes are harmful, phone systems and walking, and the things that he doesn't believe are harmful, such as cigarettes, a cancer-causing product that only exists to cause addiction to make people buy more of these things. He's a strange and muddled man, isn't he? But Richard's beliefs about smoking don't stop there. It's not just that the government he thinks is lying about why it wants us to stop smoking. The government has another, far darker ulterior motive. In fact, they want us not to experience the benefits of smoking. And uh, there may be another reason why the government do not want you to start smoking or to continue smoking is because it disrupts something that the government has uh, recently uh, pretty much mandated everybody to have. YouTube works on a kind of automated content filter, which is why Richard Vobes is vaguely prevaricating around a subject that he dare not speak. The subject that he doesn't want to mention is, of course, the anti-vax 
conspiracy theory. The ludicrous and disproven notion that vaccines are being distributed for some kind of malicious or harmful reason. That is ridiculous nonsense that is only promoted by idiotic conspiracy theorists like Richard Vobes. Vaccines are a safe and effective way of improving public health by preventing transmissible diseases. Vaccines allow the human body to recover more quickly from any kind of infection. They reduce the rates of transmission of infectious diseases and that in turn lowers the, the, the rate of disease in society. They are a brilliant idea. But please don't take your medical advice from me because I am also just another stranger on the internet. You should get your advice from your physician and your physician should be taking advice from Public Health England or whatever your nation's authority for statistical health might be. They are the people who know what the correct course of treatment is. They are the experts at preventative medicine, not random bozos on the internet. Uh, Richard Vobes' conspiracy theory goes still deeper because he believes that the reason why we were asked to stop smoking prior to the recent pandemic had nothing to do with the fact that it was a, a disease of, of the lungs, which dramatically hurt smokers far more than non-smokers. Richard Vobes believes that there is a, a far deeper and more malicious reason that America's most famous infectious disease doctor told us to quit smoking. Was it not uh, Dr Fauci at the beginning of the, uh, the virus thing in 2020? Now's a good time to give up smoking. I wonder why he wanted particularly to advise people to stop that. There's no mystery here. Uh, everyone should know this. Everyone except Richard Vobes. Everybody knows that if you're a smoker, you experience reduced lung function. And if that happens when you're also infected with a respiratory virus like COVID-19, you are going to have a bad time. And if you are like Richard Vobes, an unvaccinated smoker who may also eventually contract COVID-19, you are not going to have a, a joyous holiday. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Richard Vobes, you will suffer. And as, as much as I utterly despise the man, I would not wish that upon him because it's a horrible disease. You, you feel like you're suffocating. You can't breathe. And if your lungs are already ruined by smoking cigarettes or a pipe, then you're going to have a worse time. This is terrible advice for Richard to be giving. You should not be telling people this. It's bad. But Richard likes to invert everything in his mind. If, if mainstream society says that, that the sun is bright and night is dark, Richard would presume the opposite is true. And if we tell Richard Vobes that nicotine is a dangerous and addictive substance that confers no real health advantage, then what is it that Richard concludes? And we now discover that nicotine is actually very beneficial for you. This is clearly a farrago of twaddle spoken by a man who has become almost entirely dissociated from reality. This does not deserve a debunking because it is so obviously purest rubbish. But what is going on here? How is it that Richard Vobes has gotten himself into this kind of state? I'll offer a conspiracy theory of my own, which is that there are a certain kind of person who live in this state of profound paranoid distrust. Imagine a child who grows up with a parent who promises to come home and bring home a lovely bag of fish and chips or some kind of edible treat for the, for the family dinner. But dad doesn't show up at dinner time and he doesn't show up until 4 a.m. And when he does show up, he's drunk and he spent all his money on alcohol and cigarettes. What would a child presume from this encounter? Firstly, that his dad can't be trusted. But if dad can't be trusted, then who can be trusted? Can we trust teachers, doctors, geographers? Can we trust medical researchers? Somebody who does not have any kind of formative, trustworthy encounter as a child might eventually grow up to be distrustful of all sorts of authority figures. And that's where I believe Richard Vobes and many of his followers are. They have 
no anchor of trustworthiness. There is nobody that has provided them with any kind of formative trustworthy experience. So the only kind of kinship they have is with other people who feel the same way, which is why you often find conspiracy theorists who hold diametrically incompatible conspiracy theories nevertheless club together because the details of the conspiracy theory don't matter. What matters is all the stuff they agree they disagree with. And in Richard Vobe's case and his followers, the stuff they disagree with is everything that mainstream science says is right. Maybe, maybe there was um, a reason, again, these people, uh, they lie to you. So you've got to take the opposite, the 180 degree um, thought process on what they're saying. The common factor that unites conspiracy theorists is almost never what they actually believe. It's almost always what they choose to reject. So you might find a, an anti-vaxxer and a flat earther becoming close friends, not because they share the same theories, but because they both believe that the, the standard scientific method cannot possibly answer questions about infectious diseases or indeed the shape of the earth. It's a strange paranoid worldview that can lead to some bizarre conclusions, such as what about those, uh, those warnings you find on cigarette packets or, or tobacco products that tell you that uh, the product that you're about to consume can lead to health problems? Well, Richard has a solution for that. Look at this, you know, I'm not trying to sell this now, but look at this very attractive tin um, with the uh, lack of messages on it. In the UK, tobacco products are highly regulated. Cigarettes, for example, must be sold in plain packaging without any kind of branding or inserts. The only distinguishing mark is that the manufacturer's name and a product description that has to be written in a standardised font. The idea is to stop people from making products appear more alluring to potential customers. We, we want to stop people from smoking. What Richard holds in his hand there, that is a tin of pipe tobacco. And the regulations are slightly different. The packaging must contain a warning that is approximately half of its main area. So you can see this is what the warning should have looked like. It, it's the, the bottom approximately 50% of the, of the circle should contain that warning message. So where is Richard's warning? I deliberately cover up those messages immediately so I don't see them, the subconscious mind doesn't see them, and I see, I mean these are just flowers from a Christmas card, um, so that they can't influence me when I'm enjoying something which I find uh, very useful for thinking, for common sense, for critical thinking. For in case your jaw just dropped to the floor and you're currently rubbing your eyes in a state of shocked disbelief about what Richard Vobes just told us. Allow me to summarise. He believes that it is not the, uh, the combustion of tobacco products followed by the inhalation of those toxic gases into your lungs that causes the, the health problems we discussed earlier. He in fact believes that it is the text of the government mandated health warning that somehow plants toxic ideograms into one's mind, which in turn causes the disease. And uh, that would mean, if true, that if, that if I as a non-smoker simply read the warnings, I would get the diseases. But he, as a smoker who covers up the warning, would be perfectly safe. Uh, this is why, folks, you should never get your medical advice from conspiracy theorists on the internet especially not Richard Vobes or anybody who chooses to associate with him. Because to do so is the insanest, maddest kind of folly that any human being could commit themselves to. And if you watch the Richard Vobes show in anything other than the spirit of pure seething hatred, as I do, then you get what you deserve. Those are the consequences of the, the nitwitted foolishness of Mr. Vobes. Mr. Vobes, who despite all of this, claims to be a free thinker. As a free thinking man, I do my own stuff, thanks very much.
And, and I am assuming that you, the lovely audience watching this, are also free-thinking men and women who reject the nonsense that's being pushed down at you by these idiots that uh, think that they have all the power in the world. Richard Bobes and his fans have taken scepticism to its extreme. They are ultimate sceptics, not just choosing to disbelieve in that which is not supported by evidence and empiricism. They disbelieve everything. Whatever is said by authority figures, by people who consider themselves to be experts, by people with PhDs and professorships, it is all negated by this new kind of Vobesian scepticism that rejects absolutely everything. The only thing that matters uh, is that we reject and we can now associate ourselves with these other people who have all chosen th this life of rejecting the mainstream. That's all it is. It it's, it's just a, a negation of knowledge. It it's a rejection of any kind of learning. And in its place, a, a sort of vibing, a, a, a belief in a kind of kinship with, with other people who share the same kind of distrust. And, and then it, ultimately that means it doesn't matter what Richard says. He can get an entire lifetime of content simply by taking things that mainstream science holds true. Gravity, evolution, uh, the fact that leaves grow on trees. And then he could make some kind of 15-minute opinion show skeptical of that fact. You know what? Leaves, apparently, they don't grow on trees. They're, they're, they're made in a factory somewhere. And his audience would lap that up because the content never mattered. All that mattered was that they could see their hero being skeptical of stuff that authority figures told them. That is all Richard Vobes is doing. Anyway, if you are one of those people who imbibe, Happy imbibing. Enjoy it. Richard couldn't even be bothered to get that bit right. Imbibing does not mean smoking. It doesn't even mean in injecting your femoral artery with heroin. It, it, it just refers to drinking. It usually means drinking alcoholic drinks like whiskey or beer. But Richard can't be bothered to get anything right. He doesn't do the most basic checks on, on any of the kinds of opinions that he expresses. That is the point of the Richard Vobes show. It's a community of bullshitters. It's for people who are indifferent from the truth, people who are all unmoored from reality, because they see themselves in Richard Vobes. They see a man who is entirely liberated from, from the prison of truth and reality, from empiricism, from following logic. And that's why I think Richard Vobes has become so popular amongst these people, because he lives the life that they want to live. They may already be living. He's just a figurehead for them. And I think that's why he's a dangerous man. It's not because he says clearly wrong things about smoking and vaccines. It's because of what he and all the people who surround him represent. A rejection of any kind of rationality. And that's why I make this show, because when I see Richard Vobes, I feel like I'm staring into a kind of a heart of darkness. A, a man who believes that his vibes are, are more important than the entire sum collective human learning. He's a man who would quite happily see us all bombed back into the Stone Age because it suits his eccentric, oldie worldy vibe. He, he is that kind of idiot. And that's what motivates me to make this show and share it, horror and all, with you. Oh, I'll see you in a week's time because I, I've got some important things to be doing. I, I may soon become Elden Lord, and uh, that's a pretty big, important job.